Hey, what is up, guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV here back with another Market Watch episode. Today, we're taking a look at some more cards currently trending on the market because of support that various archetypes will be receiving soon. Now, last time we talked about Fiendsmith and how various Magical Musketeer and Fabled cards were trending. We'll touch on that a little bit, but the big news recently was the brand new Gimmick Puppet and Trickstar support. With so many different themes getting support, there's a ton to discuss, as we see many older cards suddenly having the potential to be meta-relevant this year and therefore trending on the market. Let's get started. Kicking things off, let's take a look at a couple of Gimmick Puppet cards, starting with Bisque Doll. The Gimmick Puppet support looks really cool, they have the ability to FTK and set up some really interesting boards, and on top of that, I really love how all of the card art looks, it's just so creepy and spooky, I love it. Bisque Doll is a level 8 monster that you can special summon from hand by discarding another Gimmick Puppet monster. Pretty useful since it is a free body that you can get onto the board, and it doesn't have any other sort of restriction attached to it. However, the cool thing is that you can banish this card from your graveyard, and then your opponent can't target your Gimmick Puppet monsters with card effects this turn. This is really cool because it means that you don't have to worry about cards like Effect Veiler or Infinite Impermanence, and depending on the matchup, it can make going second a lot easier as well. The only thing I'm not sure about is how necessary that effect is going to be with the new support card, since the new Gimmick Puppet Field Spell actually has a very similar effect, making your Gimmick Puppet monsters unaffected by your opponent's activated non-Ixies monster effects altogether. Now, price-wise, fortunately this card did get a reprint in Legendary Duelist Season 3 as a common, which is still basically just a bulk card, you should be able to pick it up for like 25 cents. However, Bisque Doll was originally a super rare in Legendary Duelist Immortal Destiny and appears to have spiked in price. Right now, the cheapest one that you can buy on TCG Player is between $10 and $15, but when we look at the sold listings, we actually see that there's been one copy that moved at $7, but aside from that, none have moved for more than $5 each. Don't fall into the trap with this card, it's pretty clear that people have just pulled their listings. Pick up the commons if you do want to play the deck for now so that you have them available, and if you really want to bling out the deck down the road, definitely wait until people relist their copies back up because the card's price will inevitably fall back down to that $4-$5 to $5 range. The other gimmick puppet card for us to look at here is Magnet Doll, so usually when I talk about two different cards for the same archetype, I want there to be something that distinguishes the two cards from one another. Now on the surface, Magnet Doll looks really similar to Bisque Doll. With this card, if your opponent controls a monster, and you control all gimmick puppet monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand, and this one is a level 8 monster as well. However, it seems that players have turned much more attention to this card rather than Bisque Doll because the market movement that we've seen is extremely different. This card's first printing was in Premium Gold, rather than Immortal Destiny, its common printing was actually the one that was in Immortal Destiny itself, and it didn't get a reprint in Legendary Duelist Season 3. However, with this one, we actually have seen some of the Gold Rare copies moving. Right now, on TCG Player, the cheapest ones are at around $10 each. I believe there's 4 or 5 that have sold for around that mark as well. The other notable thing is that with Magnet Doll, the commons are moving as well. We can see a ton of the commons moving at around $5 each, and still the cheapest copy available on TCG Player right now is between $4 and $5. At the time I'm recording this, I don't have any replay videos or anything that showcases the builds, so I'll probably have to try and find some of those for next week so we can see what an early build is going to look like. But if you guys can, this is a really solid card to dig up out of your common bulk at your locals, since it's definitely a card no one was paying attention to before. Moving on, we next have Trickstar Lycoris. So we just had Trickstar support revealed on Thursday, and interestingly enough, we haven't seen too many big jumps in terms of market prices. The archetype doesn't have many cards that were printed in higher rarities, it has Reincarnation as a secret and then a lot of lower rarity printings, and even then, something like Candina or Light Sage got a star pack reprint so the cards are pretty accessible. The one exception to this is Trickstar Lycoris, which actually got an ultimate rare upgrade in OTS Tournament Pack 9, and it's there that we saw a pretty big spike in price. Lycoris was a really Really important card for the Trickstar deck before. I remember the first time I played against Trickstar, my opponent used two Lycoris to target the same Candina. I didn't really know what was going on, but I also wasn't really paying attention to how much burn damage I was actually taking, and I think I almost killed myself that game. Anyways, this was one of the main cards you would end your board with. It bounces back one of your Trickstar monsters so that you can use it later on, and each time a card is added to your opponent's hand, your opponent takes 200 damage, which becomes 400 if you have a Light Stage up as well. 
Lycoris was originally a super rare and it also had a star pack printing, but it's the ultimate rares that have jumped in price over the last day or so. This card was down at around $20 for quite a while for the ulti, but right now the lowest listing on TCG player is around $42. However, aside from the one playset that moved at $44 per copy, most of the others haven't moved for more than between $30 to $35. I don't know how good a deck like Trickstars can be right now, especially since even if they did pop up more, I think something like Dark Ruler No More just completely shuts down the deck's whole like burn gimmick, but I guess we'll find out. If you do own the ultis though, I'd definitely err on the side of caution and just go ahead and move them, pick up the supers or something instead. I actually do prefer the lower rarity because it matches the rest of the deck. The ultis just feel so out of place with the rest of the deck mostly coming in super and ultra. Okay, so here's a card that we didn't actually look at last time, it's Magical Musketeer Max. So this card is a Link 1 for the Magical Musketeer archetype, and it's actually low-key a really crazy Link 1 monster. On summon, this card either summons Musketeers from the deck equal to the number of spell and trap cards your opponent controls, or it searches for spells and traps equal to the number of monsters your opponent controls. This card is definitely going to be hit by Valor or Impermanence every time you summon it if it's possible, but I think that players use Link into the brains with this card to prevent your opponent from from responding during the summon window altogether, ensuring that its effect can resolve. Despite being so crazy, Magical Musketeers have never really had a chance to do anything meta-wise. The theme is really cool where you're activating these spells and traps from your hands and triggering effects, but really I think that the deck just doesn't do enough to compete in the context of today's game. I think the hope is that the Fiendsmith theme is really good and it actually does do enough that if it's combined with the Musketeers, the two together can actually be meta-relevant. This card has just the one printing from Battles of Legend Heroes Revenge as an ultra rare. It is worth noting that it wasn't reprinted in Battles of Legend Chapter 1. Now historically this card is only worth around a dollar, it wasn't particularly short printed or anything, and Musketeers just never really got that much attention. Even now with the hype that we've seen for Fiendsmith, the ultras have gone up, but only to around $3-$4 to $4 each. If you already have the rest of the Musketeer cards, not owning this card probably isn't going to be a deal breaker, it's still cheap enough that you can just go ahead and pick up a set, but at the same time, Musketeers haven't proven enough to be competitively viable ever since their release. Definitely do not try to pick this card up expecting that it'll go up, it's probably going to cap out at around $5 each if that. Moving on to a couple of other things, we next have Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Gustav Max. Gustav Max is a generic rank 10 monster with a really simple effect. You detach a material from it to burn your opponent for 2000 damage. Of course this is a great effect if you are in time, but the real draw with this card recently is that you can summon Juggernaut Lieb on top of it, and that's a card that can boost itself to 6000 attack points and attack multiple times in the same turn. So between the two together, you should theoretically be able to OTK your opponent very easily. Now, although rank 10s historically aren't very common to make, they're potentially going to be much more relevant in just a couple of months as they are used in the Ubel extra deck. Ubel and Spirit of Ubel are level 10 monsters, so you could overlay two of them to make the Gustav Max and go into the package here. This deck does run super poly targets, but aside from that, I think you do have a lot of space in the extra deck, so the whole Gustav Max package makes sense to run in some of those slots. Fortunately, Gustav Max has several different printings. There is a super common and then two rares available, so you should be able to pick one up for only 50 cents or so. However, it's the two ultra rare versions that are currently on the higher end. The Jump Ultra Rare, which is the original printing, is around $14 right now as you guys can see from the graph on the left, with the very few quantities available on the market. While we do have the Lost Art Ultra as well, the graph on the right, it's a little bit more at $16 to $17. Either of those two versions is pretty nice, but obviously it's difficult to justify spending that when you could be buying the same card for less than a dollar. It is still worth noting though, just in case you have some of those ultras lying around, because between now and the release of Legacy of Destruction, when people are going to be hyped for all the Ubel cards, is a great time to offload them. Okay, so this is one that I'm sort of hesitant to talk about, it's Vidos the Eruption Dragon of Extinction. So this card is theoretically a part of the Ashen Dark type, a TCG exclusive theme introduced in Phantom Nightmare. It's sort of like a hand trap, where during the main phase as a quick effect you can activate this card in hand to destroy a field spell card and then special summon it to your opponent's side of the field, then you have the option to add to your hand or set an Ashen Continuous Trap from your deck. Also, if it goes from the opponent's field to the graveyard, you destroy all monsters on the field as well. So I'm considering looking at this card specifically because I think that the hand trap effect might be useful, not because I think that Ashen is going to be too crazy. 
TCG exclusive archetypes just haven't been great recently. I'm not entirely sold on the Ashen. However, we do have a couple of really powerful field spells coming up soon with the Tenpai Dragons and Gimmick Puppet field spells, both making it really difficult to interact with your opponent's monsters. Because of that, I do actually think there may be a case to be made for Vitos to be sided in the future. Even though you are giving your opponent that body, if they do try to link it off, it'll just blow up the board anyways, so it can be really difficult to deal with. However, I have a difficult time justifying this card's price. It's currently between $15 and $20, and it's been around that range ever since its release, even though the card is not seeing any meta play whatsoever. This is actually the second most expensive secret rare in the set, which is crazy when you realize how underwhelming a lot of the secrets in the set are. The thing is, I don't think that its price is high because people are sold on its potential, but rather there's just people hoping that it's useful because there's so little other value in the set. However, I cannot justify spending like $18 on a copy of this card at this point, because when I think about if this card had come out in Age of Overlord, right, it would literally be like a $2 to $3 card. That said, if you can pick the card up for around $8 to $10 each, I think I would bite the bullet and just pick up a set for myself to own, but don't go ham on this card, don't overinvest. Either way, this will be an interesting card to keep an eye on over the next several months. And finally, the last card I want to look at is Trident Dragon. This is a card that has been extremely in demand over the last month or so. There's been a ton of hype for the Tenpai Dragon archetype, especially since the deck started doing quite well over in the OCG, and players are definitely looking for this card here as they prepare for when Legacy of Destruction comes out. This card requires both the tuner and the non-tuner to be dragons. On summon, you can pop up to two other cards you control, and then this card gains an extra attack for each card that you pop. Now, with all of the different Tenpai Dragon effects, this card can get really, really big, and it can theoretically help you to win the game instantly by dealing a ton of damage in the battle phase. Because of this, all the different versions of Trident Dragon have spiked. The ultimate rares remain pretty crazy. You're looking at having to spend $80 to $90 for a single copy. However, the Ultras and Secrets have both been trending up over the last couple of months or so. I believe the last time we talked about this card was a couple weeks ago. It had gone up to around $30, but settled back down to around $25, and we suggested picking one up at that price if you were interested in playing the deck. Now hopefully you own one now, because those Ultras and Secrets are now $45 lowest on TCG Player, and we are actually seeing them moving at that price. However, I do want to warn you guys against owning too many copies of this card, because I think a reprint is definitely on the way. The reprint might come in Rarity Collection 2, Terminal Revenge, or an OTS Tournament Pack. There's no way that Trident Dragon wasn't on Konami's radar when the Tenpai Dragons were designed, so they very likely have this card slotted to be reprinted in one of those reprint sets that's dropping around the same time as Legacy of Destruction comes out. If you guys can wait, I'd even suggest holding off on buying Dragon at this current really inflated price. It is a bit of a gamble since it's definitely possible that the card doesn't get a reprint, but we have to sort of make an educated guess here and assume that Konami wants to reprint these chase cards that will make the new decks more playable. Alright guys, that is all we have for today's episode. Definitely really cool to see some of those older archetypes getting new support. I really do hope that we see some new Thunder Dragon cards because those are expected to get some support. Uh, we do also have Medulce's expected, and then I don't know if there's going to be a Magical Musketeer support card as well, or if they were just reprinted in the OCG because they can be played alongside the Fiendsmith stuff. I guess we'll find out hopefully next week. Anyways guys, if you did enjoy today's Market Watch episode, please make sure you let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. Make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.